Our Tony Hatesclare! Yeah, fuck yeah, everybody. Holy moly. Can you guys believe it? It's Monday night, everyone. How you guys doing? This is Kill Tony number 64, for those of you keeping track. 64. 64 motherfucking episodes of Kill Tony. And we're blowing up, people. It's all happening. In fact, I'm happy to announce that today we have our first ever real sponsor, everybody. Real sponsor. A real sponsor. That's right. McDonald's, Squirt, you name it. If you didn't catch on, I'm sorry to break the news to you, listeners, but that was all a big joke. However, t tonight we actually have a real sponsor. It, she cooked food for Red Band, myself, our guests, and uh, the producer, Josh Martin, and, uh, and it was unbelievable. It's delicious. The gourmet cooking. Put your hands together for Elise Lane, everybody, sitting yeah. right over there. Way to go. A super awesome chef. She's worked with many, many great chefs. She's the one. She's a person. Part of her job is she's a recipe checker, people. Yeah. So when chefs come out with something, she's the one that says, this sucks, or put it in the book. Yeah. That's an actual job. Yeah. And she was nice enough to make us an amazing meal. I believe there was some ahi tuna, some edamame, some, uh, some shrimp rolls, some glass noodles. And uh, so if any listeners in Southern California, and perhaps even wherever you are listening from around the world. You could fly her out. Yeah, I'm sure she doesn't you could, mind. You could fly her out. You can, uh, maybe she could freeze up some dishes for you, send them on ice. I'm sure that's possible for the right amount of money. Her name is Elise Lane. You can follow her on Twitter at Elise Lane, E-L-Y-S-E-L-A-I-N. A very confusing name to spell. But her Instagram is much easier. That's at... The girl with a pan. The girl with a pan. Look her up on Instagram. It's like food porn, right? Yeah. That's yeah. one of your big hashtags. I looked you up earlier, and <laughs> the dishes were unbelievable. Lemon risotto, something I saw, some crazy stuff. On Facebook, she's the girl with a pan. On Instagram and Facebook, just look up the girl with a pan. That's Elise Lane. Follow her on Twitter. She's unbelievable. Mix some good food into your life, people. No shit. And if you're having a party, have her cater it, man. Have her cater some awesome. This is like legit food. Yes. This isn't like uh, chicken or chipotle. Right. Or, you know, like it, this. This is hard. Like going to a nice restaurant yeah. and having it catered. I was very surprised with how delicious it was. Thank you very much. And we're definitely gonna have her back anytime Fuck we yeah. have guests that are uh, foodies on. And um, I'm very excited about our new partnership with Elise. For all you comedians in the room, if you ever make it big, hire a lease for a party. That's so right. 17 years from now, when one of you makes it big, <laughs> hire a lease. Or her daughter at that time. She might have <laughs> right. a daughter at that time. Elise Jr. <laughs> um, I'm so excited. It was another fun weekend. I was out of town in San Francisco. There's a, a lot of shake-up here at the Comedy Store. A big, 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 crazy uh, shift in power and momentum as a Kill Tony Special consultant, he was on a few episodes. Uh, Tommy Morris is no longer with the Comedy Store. Um, he was the talent coordinator here since I've been here, and for the last about 10 years, he was uh, under the tutelage of the great Mitzi Shore. And now uh, Adam Egit uh, yes. uh, is the new talent coordinator of the Comedy Store. And an amazing maneuver, very cool guy, very hip. Very awesome. Very every adjective I need to call him for my spots to continue happening. He, he's got a huge dick. He's he's not standing in the back right now. He's <laughs> beautiful, always well dressed, hilarious. Best or, best skin ever. I mean, <laughs> but what's amazing is we had Tommy on a few episodes as a consultant, but Adam was actually on an episode just a few weeks ago with Andrew Santino, and that's available out there on iTunes and at DeathSquad.tv. You can watch it and uh, see how, you know, some of you young comedians can see how the new talent coordinator thinks about stuff. Go back and watch that. Check out his taste so that... And it's been very interesting here, uh, Tony. You you missed this whole weekend, but I I got to I, I had to make it here. If you guys hang out at the Comedy Store, 
now's the time to be hanging out here. So much nonsense, like craziness has happened. People are coming. Like Tosh was here the other day. Like all these new uh, comics that you haven't seen here are just suddenly appearing here now because of the news. Yeah. Uh, so this is an exciting time for the comedy store. So you know, ch just start showing up here, guys. It's 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 going to be pretty. I bet you anything. This week we're going to see something insane. Like m me and you already know about yeah. it. I think. We but, uh, probably shouldn't say it. We huh? probably shouldn't say it. Though. All right. But well, just, we'll talk about it next week. Yeah. We because sure somebody might be coming <laughs> back to the comedy store. That's I'm right. I'm not going to name any names. Yeah. Uh, but uh, anybody that knows me and Brian and sees our excitement could probably uh, make some. Anyway. Yeah, let's whatever. Let's just move forward. Connect the dots. Great <laughs> stuff happening here at the Comedy Store, the home of Kill Tony. That's right. So uh, it was a fun weekend. I was in San Francisco with Jeffrey Ross, and uh, I'm excited to be back. It was a nice, long, gloomy weekend. San Francisco is just the worst weather you've ever imagined in your life. Like they say Seattle's more depressing, but I think San Fran's a little bit more depressing because it doesn't have that depressing stigma. So like you're thinking that it might be nice when you get there and it's not nice at all. San Francisco's weather is garbage and I was excited to tell them that from on stage. I just completely destroyed them. I talked about, I talked about how the pot's not even, like the pot's not strong enough there. Are you serious? Well, I mean it is, but but I'm saying the pot's not strong enough for San Francisco oh, to I be see. fun. I kept, telling, I kept telling them that. And they're like, they're a smart crowd, but, and they like it. They like taking jokes. And it's also, a, it was also, you know, a Jeff Ross crowd, so they like getting made fun of. But man, San Fran can't really take it when you're just being honest with them. Like, your city sort of sucks. And they're like, well, why don't you go back to fucking LA? And it's like, no, I will. <laughs> I like sunlight. Yeah, I, I like San Fran, but you're right. The weather is always awful there, yeah. and it's so expensive. I, I just don't understand why people move up there and pay more money for less sun. It's crazy. It makes no sense. It's crazy. Yeah. It, 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 if, it, yeah. yeah. San Fran, I love you. Good people. But build a fucking machine to break up the clouds or something. <laughs> it's just if, you, if you're that fancy of a city and you're that way ahead of the time, build a cloud breaker. <laughs> <laughs> the Cloud Breaker. That sounds like a cool name cloud or something. Cloud Breaker. Hiding in the red corner. Raymond, the Cloud Breaker. <laughs> Doesn't even matter the last name. You don't even need a last name if you have the nickname the Cloud Breaker. <laughs> Speaking of powerful people with fancy nicknames, we always have a head of security on the show. This is somebody's first time doing this position. Uh, for those of you new to the show, we've always had a head of security. It used to be a man that went by the name of the Iron Patriot who quit around episode 30 saying he got too big for the show. <laughs> At that point, we decided to show him exactly how replaceable he is by hiring a brand new replacement each week. This week will be no different. A very special patriot. For those of you that have listened for a long time, you re might recognize him as a very fun young rising comedian named Scott Kidd. But tonight, he is the Kidd Patriot. <laughs> Brand new Patriot. Wow. Kid, how you doing? Good. How are you guys doing? Wow. wow. Strong voice. Yeah, probably one of the more confident Patriots we've ever had. Fuck yeah. Wow, okay. You really got the rhythm down. Is this your first time dressing up like a superhero? No, actually, it's not. I've been Robin, Superman, Green Lantern, and uh, I think that's it. Have you been any superhero that doesn't wear underwear over their pants? Uh, no, no. That's uh, prerequisite. So this is a first for you. Actually, yeah. yeah Very that's... good. Well, welcome. I'm glad we got you all wired for sound. And uh, how's the how's everything else? You good? You cozy? Good. You have good. the uh, classic school shooter black Adidas with white stripe shoes. You can't hide those. No, never. Fuck yeah. Well, I like your style. We have a very exciting show, and I'm glad that you're with us. I'm going to pack up this... Uh, Gourmet food from Elise Lane, because this got left here. Delicious gourmet food. A private chef for hire. You can also call her at her home number. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Just kidding, guys. I wouldn't do that. Just get this out of the way. Uh, Scott, you're excited? You ready for this? Now, Scott's one of the first people that actually asked to be the Patriot before I asked them. 
Uh, he actually messaged me via Facebook today, and for some reason, something in my gut, and I'm not sure why or what, told me to go with it. Hell yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Now, why is it that you were looking forward to being the Patriots so much? Well, you know, I'm just uh, that kind of goofy guy. I felt like I could All right, fit that's the enough. Character. Okay, All let's right, move I'm on. Done, I'm done. Okay. Now, what I love, though, is that if, if you know anything about the show, you also know that the Patriots' only real job is to have a question for whichever two guests are on that episode. Now, what I loved about what happened today is I go, you have questions for our guests, right? For our guests, right? And he goes, yeah, yeah, totally. I go, okay, let's just give this a run through. What are your questions? And he goes, well, for Rick Glassman, I'm going to ask this, and for uh, Brent Moore, and I'm going to ask this. I go, fuckhead, those were last week's guests. So he already blew it 10 minutes before the show started, and I updated him that he's confused because our guests are the other two stars of the hit show, Undateable on NBC, which just got picked up for season two. Season two! Some people say that's coincidence that I had the cast members on one week and then the next week, and it got picked up in between, but we call that the Kill Tony bump. <laughs> Put your hands together for the great Chris Lee and Ron Bunches are here! With every one of those late night stations playing songs, bringing tears to my eyes. I was seriously yeah. thinking about I'd never seen a win. Now, I say the whole undateable thing, but we've all been doing stand up together for a long time. So That's right. And uh, I'm so glad that you guys are here because it's a very stand up oriented podcast. And yeah. uh, you guys are awesome. How are you guys feeling? Good. Today? Feel good. good. Feel protected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you, ever, you ever work with anything that close to the, anything that creepy next to you? Um, I wish I could say no. <laughs> I got him right here. <laughs> <laughs> Patriot Bunches. Welcome, Ron. How's it going? Pretty good. Thank you for the delicious meal that you provided. Yes, from Elise Lane. You guys uh, both had a, have you guys liked it? Good stuff. Yeah, right? it was really good. That's awesome. Really good. That's awesome. And Elise uh, is available for hire. So. She's probably too busy after this bump, right? Heck yeah, the, <laughs> the Kill Tony bump. <laughs> Um, so how, how fun. I'm so glad you guys are here. We're going to have a fucking blast as always. I had the two I, other guys on last week. You guys work with them. I am attributed. I am attributing our second season. <laughs> what <whatever> that word <laughs> is. <laughs> is. Oh, uh, you can't talk. You a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I remember you said you weren't going to do this. I'm sorry. <laughs> our, I am attributing. Our second season pickup to you. Yes. So, thank you. Boom, you heard it here. That's right. Chris confirmed it. <laughs> if you ever if you have a TV show, people, that needs to get picked up for a second Go season, ahead. I'd be happy to have show. you on the show. That's right. <laughs> uh, so let's get into it. Patriot, what are your questions for tonight's guest? Well, I have a uh, question for Ron. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Ron, you're such a, a likable guy. <laughs> I, I was wondering... Um, what do you think, or what do you feel was the best decision that you made in your comedy career? <laughs> well, that's like a really good question. Yeah. It's a deep question. From a guy dressed yeah. up. Yeah. Thank you, Iron Patriot. A guy wearing uh, five-year-old's pajamas. <laughs> deep question. Uh, probably just staying in Portland and, and doing comedy in Portland was a big deal for me because there wasn't really any map on how to do it so people just kind of did whatever made them happy and what made them laugh and i didn't go out and do like the kind of the pre way to do it before that was to go out and do triple runs in minnesota or montana and shitty places and i was just like i'm not going to do that i'd rather just stay in the city and just work on my act and not worry about getting 50 bucks and uh just focus on getting better i think That's that was probably awesome. the best decision how uh how much time did you spend in portland before leaving there uh six, stand up. six years Wow. So you got good there. You got, you know, professional there. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I was, yeah. I was That's doing cool. stuff. I, was, I had already been on Conan before, you know, oh. I left Portland. Wow. So you worked it all out there. When you first started stand-up, were you, like, talking really fast and stuff? And you're like... I was doing <laughs> regular stuff. I was doing, like, who's drinking the night? <laughs> I still do that, but yeah. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, well, don't, don't offer me anything because I'm allergic. <laughs> It's a good punchline. Yeah. They <laughs> loved it. Patriot, what's your question for Chris? Uh, Chris. <laughs> My, you better, you had a good one for him. You better not okay, fuck this up. Okay, let's see. We'll see. Uh, Chris, you're, you're noted as having the influences of uh, 
Jim Carrey and Eddie Murphy. Sure, okay. Let's just say some magical miracle occurs where you could go back in time and play either one of them in one of their movies. <laughs> Which role would you choose? This guy's coming correct. Dude. Yeah, that was a great question. Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, and, uh, yeah. For not knowing who the guests were until five minutes ago, you yeah. really... Uh, you got a smartphone. You just Googled that shit, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's on my my Wikipedia. I just saw that. Um, <laughs> um, I would pick. I would pick for sure Beverly Hills Cop. Uh, uh, Murphy. Yeah, definitely, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So one of my favorite movies that. of all time. Yeah, what? I'd like to see that. Yeah, Heck yeah. definitely. Yeah, good, but like the one where they went to Magic Mountain. That's the one I like. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just want to go to Magic Mountain. You can just get a ticket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I won't go when there's nobody there. I, yeah, right. Well, that, that actually just inspired a question for me. If you were to play Jim Carrey's character in Dumb and Dumber, who would you want your Jeff Daniels to be? You have one in mind? Oh, that's a good question. Um, fuck, that's a good question. Not Brent Morin. <laughs> How about that? That's my answer. That's a perfect answer. <laughs> That's a perfect answer. Let's get into uh, let's get into the show. You guys ready for Kill Tony sixty four? Over twenty comedians signed up for the opportunity to do one minute men talk shop with me, Red Band, the guests, and even little Patriot Boy over there. Um, and we are going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> what? Did you just malfunction? <laughs> Comedians, come up when I say your name, and you know that you get one minute of stage time, and you know that your minute is up when you hear the sound of a kitty. You can barely Aww. hear it. Listen to how quiet Did that little baby Did somebody just squeeze a real kitty? <laughs> <laughs> Listen to that kitty one more time so you don't get confused. There it is. There oh, you there you go. go. That's way louder. There okay, you good. go. There's that, that's when your time is up. That means wrap it up then. You can't run the time, or else you're going to bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. <laughs> He is furious yeah, tonight. Was, uh, Why didn't you mention mad. the owl that hangs out with his <laughs> there? There's always little animals hanging out with him each week. It's always something different. I was surprised to hear an owl in that one. I'm trying to be more bird friendly. I like that. Yeah. Oh, like I see. <laughs> well, good to know. It's a good um, goal. Guys, are you excited? This is Kill Tony number 64. Let's get it on. <laughs> Going up first. Doing a minute. Put your hands together for Sierra Catow. Okay, go get her. Now, what's interesting, we're going to kill some time here for a second, because Sierra Catow, I happen to know, is one of the only comedians under 21 that signed up for the show. So what that oh, means yeah, is, since it's a 21 Unless and over insane, club, huh? she's outside right now waiting, hoping that her name just got pulled out of a bucket. Little does she know that it actually did. It's She's not the best for a live show to have somebody waiting on the front nah, patio. But it's, <laughs> is she five? Like, how old is she? I would like. <laughs> it's an I think she. I think she's. 19, five would be. Nineteen or twenty. Oh, okay, I'd love so to see under. a five-year-old yeah. do stand-up. Just totally relatable. <laughs> <All right. laughs> for me. She's real blue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Told my fucking mom to suck my dick. <laughs> Patriot's hand is up. This should be interesting. I, I just uh, happened to notice, I think her birthday was a couple days ago. Well, you're a creepy guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the end it. of that sentence was, and now she's too old. Put your hands together for it. Sierra Cattell, everybody. Here she is. Cool. Hey, folks. Um, this is really exciting. This is a little different for me. I, uh, I'm used to running my jokes by my grandma. I don't know if you guys do this too, maybe run your jokes by my grandma. Yeah. And if she laughs, then I know it's funny and I'll come up here and perform it for you guys. Um, and then if she like doesn't laugh, I perform it anyway. <laughs> it's like, what the hell does she know, right? She doesn't even speak English, so I don't know why. No, actually, my grandma used to love coming to my shows. And, you know, after a while, it kind of got annoying, so it's like, Got to stay home, Grandma. You know what I mean? Like, no more coming to my shows. Um, but, you know, she, she found a loophole, as grandmas do, right? And then she died, and now she's always watching my shows. Damn it, Grandma. <laughs> she's, she's so clever and so dead. Uh, I, I, 
don't know. Um, yeah, a little bit about me. So I'm in college right now, um, but I did well in high school. Uh, I was valedictorian class president, but you know, those are just some of the perks of being she brought out the bear. That was fun. I even her. gave her two meows because yeah. she's so adorbs. Yeah, right. she Totes adorbs. <laughs> so much fun. Hell yeah. Uh, Sorry, it's a little out of breath. How old are you, Sierra? Uh, I turned 20 last Saturday. Wow. wow. Ah, Patriot was right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it that much scarier when you know the Patriots out there on Facebook just hawking everybody. Uh, was, just uh, Facebook let me know. I wish her a happy birthday. Done deal, guys. No. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, that's the wrong time to say done deal. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I realize that. That doesn't realize go that. there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Done deal just says that it's not a done deal. Uh, that means that you did some more Googling after that, but. Jesus. Sierra's only 20. Let's not let's not scare her away from comedy for good, Patriot. <laughs> Have you been getting up? Have you been uh, getting spots? Uh, yeah, totally. What, yeah. What's, uh, what main uh, clubs are you going to? Are you, are you going to? So I, they let me do the Laugh Factory every Tuesday. Oh, no, don't tell oh. the time because the Patriot's going to come find you. Remember okay. that. <laughs> uh, at 6 a.m. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I did Flappers last Sunday. I don't know, just anything I can do. I come here every Monday and sit out in the patio and just look weird. That's great. That's we need to get you a fake fake ID though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I mean, yeah, yeah, half yeah. of half of being a stand up, especially is is watching comedy. Yeah, do you, yeah. Do you watch a lot of comedy? I watch yeah, I mean, like Laugh Factory lets me sit in the back all the time. So I, you know, it's only really here that's super strict. Yeah. And sometimes the, uh, <laughs> which you know, I understand. Um, which and then let's see the improv. Um, for the most part, I was able to go to their open mics and everything be fine, but I think they started moving it to like the bar. So oh. then I kind of, one time I just went in and was like, oh yeah, I'm 21, what? And then um, another time, you know, I just sat outside and drew, drew on a table. I mean, on a pad. I don't know. You Sorry, didn't vandalize weird. is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, it was fine. Cool. <laughs> Are you Banksy? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool. Are you, wait, so how long have you been doing stand up? Uh, about, I've been, well, okay, I first went up when I was 16, I do it on and off. Um, not so much during the school year when I'm at college. Yeah. Um, you go to Harvard. Yeah, yeah. You do? Uh, yeah. yeah, I brought you guys to the Lampoon. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's so, right. Um, do, yeah, so yeah, I, I got oh, I thought those. I, just yeah. recognized, I thought I just recognized her from here. That's right. It's okay. fun. Yeah, yeah. I got to take bomb hits in the castle yeah, because yeah. of you. <laughs> And that's for real. He's not just, he wasn't high. Yeah, that really yeah, happened. No, mm -hmm. They were great, yeah. So you ran into these guys on campus? Um, they were doing their undateable tour and oh. were performing at Laugh Boston nearby. So uh -huh. just got them to come by the castle. Yeah. Awesome. And they gave so me that award that I rubbed in to the cast good. every day since then. Yeah, mm -hmm. good. That's, that's the idea. That's some real Harvard skull and bone shit yeah. right there. Yeah, yeah it was cool. Him to, okay, taking him to a castle. Yeah, it was very cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love That's that. That's a big part of the uh, comedy culture at school. So you've always wanted to do stand-up or what? Um, pretty much. I mean, when I started, I felt like I wanted to do it, and then I went to school, and I continued doing it at school. And then every time I, you know, every summer and winter break, I come back here to pursue markets since I started here. But I try to do it in Boston. Um, there's good, good rooms know. out there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. going on out there. It's really cool. The community is tight. So it's fun. Yeah. Do you do any drugs? Because I kind of feel like like you're really funny, but I want to see you on drugs. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I, I don't do any hard drugs. Uh, still still figuring out, you know, the underage drinking thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's all... <laughs> it's, I, I don't know. I, I'm open You should to just it, dabble for it a little happen. bit. Ron. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Ron, first of all, Ron... Come on, man. She's not, even She's not even 21. And what the fuck are you doing, Patriot? Help. Help. <laughs> like, he's telling him to do drugs, and Patriot's just looking at his palms. I was just remembering what... I couldn't remember what hard drugs were. Drugs are drugs. I'm sorry. Yeah. Fuck That's yeah. actually the truest thing yeah. you said. Did your, did your grandmother really die? Um... Well, <laughs> uh, no, but she's gonna. One's, one's still going strong, and oh, uh, the other one too. did pass away, but before I was born. 
So oh. too soon, too soon. Not, not That's your grandma's character. name. Too soon. Too too soon. soon. <laughs> Sierra Katow, everybody. <laughs> Congratulations, you've been great. A great set, fun times. Sierra, I think you dropped something on this stage. I think you. Oh, sorry. I don't know what that is. It might be a receipt yeah. for. Uh, okay. <laughs> Follow her on Twitter, listeners. She's Sierra Catow. Sierra K A T O W, all one word. So you can uh, you could follow her on Twitter. Maybe be, pull a patriot. Find out when her next birthday is. And <laughs> follow her closely. I, I can't believe the comedy store is the, this strict one. <laughs> I know, right? It's, it's, it's what the, the fuck? It's the only thing they protect is their liquor license. Yeah. You, can, <laughs> you, you can jizz on the walls, but if you're not 21, get the fuck out. That's, that's the store for you. Maybe we can get Ico's like ID or something. Somebody like that. We can. Yeah, that's true. I'm sure she could pass as just any random Asian girl. Yeah. Bo maybe Bobby Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Put your hands together for your next comic. It's Zach Kirby. Zach Kirby. This might be him walking up right now. Here it is, Ooh, Zach Kirby. Ooh, confident. These jokes. Hey, everyone. Um, I just graduated from junior college. Is anyone here in college? Um, whenever I was in the bathrooms at my junior college... <laughs> I couldn't help but notice some of the most offensive statements I've ever read in my entire life always happened to be graffitied upon those stall walls at my local junior college. One time I went into the bathroom stall, either before or in the middle of class, to take a shit, and someone had literally written on the wall in Sharpie and in all caps, I fucking hate blind people. As I was sitting there, my cheeks spread wide open to allow the previous night's Baja Fresh to flow like in and out spread out of the end of my bowels. All I could think to myself was, one, why did this guy hate blind people so much? What did he have against them? And two, was he talking about, like, Asian drivers or actual blind people? So I go to wipe, and I realize that there's no more toilet paper in the stall that I'm in, and the bathroom is packed. There you go. 58 seconds of wow. thunder and lightning. Before the cat. <laughs> yeah, beat the cat. Zach, that was interesting. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> it almost seems like a very true... I mean, that, first of all, I loved how confidently you asked if anybody else just graduated from junior college. <laughs> you asked that, like, hey, does anybody else like uh, sunlight and water? Um, like, very casual. And, and I like the pause that he didn't give after yeah, he asked the question. The, <laughs> the, the not waiting for the answer was I actually good. said those two lines out of order. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Oh. Very descriptive. Oh, yeah. yeah. It I was mean, very descriptive. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I think I'm dirty, but you're, I mean, you're really just talking about opening up your butthole and letting uh, a <laughs> yeah. fresh really painted a picture there. Yeah. yeah. You made it sound like you poop differently than everybody else. <laughs> Um, I had an experience with Baja Fresh, so I had to throw that in. You had what? I had an experience with Baja Fresh, so I felt like I should What, did you get molested there? <laughs> yeah, what happened? No, like, it gave me a really big, like, bathroom experience. Every since then. So. At the actual Baja Fresh bathroom? No, oh. the next day, like, my, I had eaten Baja Fresh one night, and then the next day, like, I had an explosive experience. It was the next day? Yeah, the next morning. You have a pretty strong system to be able to hold Baja Fresh oh, in yeah. overnight. Uh, I've never, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't really know that you It was just waiting till the last possible moment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're coming out, but wait, we're not ready. Yeah. You're going to have horrible <laughs> diarrhea in about 24 hours. The beans aren't here yet. <laughs> <laughs> Bunch up, we're out. You, you walked very slowly up here and uh, meticulously. And I noticed you were also walking next to a guy that was wearing another Dodgers shirt. Was that your friend, or was that just oh, a no. coincidence? He was just in my way. Wow. <laughs> That's why I walked so slowly. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Heck yeah. How many, you, how many times have you been on stage? This yeah. is my first time. First time. Oh, wow. Wow. There you go. You. We did it again. That's awesome. Popped another cherry here on Kill Tony. How mm -hmm. fun. Yeah, the, 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 the timing thing is the biggest thing. Like, at the beginning, you, you really have to... 
be comfortable. Either that, or you could be that awkward and kill in yeah. two seconds, but that's <laughs> going to be hard to mimic. Right. <laughs> that exact... I don't know if it was on purpose or a complete coincidence, but... Uh-oh. I was just going with the flow. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, if you always do that, you're going to have a lot of fun. Yeah. Just that's vibing sure. with the room. Yeah. First time on stage, and you were getting hard laughs from the four of us in about two and a half seconds. Yeah, so we, we all good. know it wasn't like that, though. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It wasn't punchline related. It's true. It's true. In fact, during one of the only strategic punchlines, I thought was the uh, the least exciting part, and that was the bad drivers uh, with a blind or bad drivers. Like you brought in a, uh, or, a, or at Asian drivers, you brought in like a, a topic out of nowhere right. when yeah. the, everything else sort of painted a real picture. <laughs> <laughs> that was the one line that I wasn't sure on. Yeah. <laughs> that was the one line. That was huh? the one line. Yeah, I, I probably it. would. I probably would ask that line. That's. Yeah. That, I mean, that's you know, Asian driver Joe. Come on, that's you know. Right. When you already have them committed to Baja Fresh and all that other stuff. There's no reason to yeah, go, like and, and, I'm, and I'm taking a shit, and the Baja Fresh is coming out of my butt, and then a chicken crossed the road, and I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, you don't need to go, you don't want to go like, backwards. Well, it really happened. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so, but also, <laughs> but also, how old are you? I'm 23. All right, so you're young, and you got on stage for the first time, so really the only thing that you could do that would help you is to just get on stage as much yeah, as possible, yeah. really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, to tell you... Do this, do that. You're, right. It's just like it's right. kind of moot. Like totally. there's no, you just yeah. gotta keep doing is it. Stand up something that you've always wanted to do, or yeah, I, um, not I got, really. I just keep eating Baja Fresh. <laughs> <laughs> I got really into stand up, and when I was in high school, and I um, didn't. I thought I could do it, but I didn't try. I listened, started listening to your show a couple months ago, and this show, this show, and um, it made me decide to go ahead and write my first minute. And That's cool. I've hey, signed up. You like, oh, people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've signed up like five times. And finally got on. Wow, that's, that's cool, dude. So cool, man. Yeah. That's yeah now awesome. just you know, just keep on going up. Try to go yeah. up at least two or three times a week, if minimum, at yeah, that. For sure. You can find a lot of places that like. There's this laundry place down the pl- down the street. I think that does it like at midnight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whatever that place is called, I forget it now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But there's all these places to try. And everything. Watch out for like the, the. You know, I mean, I I'm pretty gross also, but you know. When you're so new, it's very easy to just go right to being gross. And what ends up happening is just making people sh- like, what the fuck is he talking about instead of trying to laugh? They're just like, disgusting. What, what, you yeah. know, like, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. I mean, I've heard your, I've heard your comedy material. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. But what, 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 what I'm saying is. <laughs> what, what, <laughs> <laughs> I'm very dirty. I, I, I get you. Yeah. I, like I have a whole hour of poop material. That, I, but but it's really hard to. Uh, I guess it's hard to do that shit without it being just. It has to be funny. Just, and yeah, it has to be funny. And it's fine. You know, it's funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's really hard to do that. Those two I was together. going for the descriptiveness in that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, area. Of the, it sounded yeah. like a commentary for a really disturbing movie or something. Yeah. Like that. Was, well, Zach. Good job. You though. did it, man. Keep doing it. Yeah, good job, dude. Congratulations. Thank you. Come back again soon. That was the first time on stage of Zach Kirby. He's on Twitter, guys, at Zach Cool. Z-A-C-H Cool. So follow him on Twitter, listeners, and then you can see what he does next. Maybe he'll do more he stuff. Do, he does look like somebody that they would interview on Forensic Files, though. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. He's got the school shooter face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'm t- talking about casting here. I mean, if yeah, I was cast <laughs> relaxed, I'm saying he should be in a movie. It's Hollywood. Where he plays a school shooter. Right. <laughs> and, you know what? I'm going to ask you guys a question that I always ask uh, first-time guests. Um, was there ever something that you did when you very first started stand-up that you can't believe you did or that you sort of look back on and you're like, man, that's sort of embarrassing. I can't believe I ever said that or did that. You'd be amazed at the answers that I've gotten. Oh, I bet, people. yeah. It's incredible. Chris well, Porter used to do a thing where he'd come out with no shirt. And, oh, and, wow, And he would really? suck his stomach in. And what was it? He's like, oh, I'm the letter C because he's so skinny. Oh, wow. And he's like, I can't believe I did that. You know, like just a bunch of crazy things. So I just, I mean, it's, it's hard to learn 
and not be shitty. You know what I mean? Right. So like you have to start shitty. So like I remember, I mean, I would just do all sorts of shit, like just sex jokes that were just cheap. You know, like I mean, I would do that always. I like would close with that, <laughs> and you know, it just. I, I I can't even think about it now. It makes me fucking feel terrible. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> He's talking about my jokes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess yeah, I can think of things, but I don't like it's just painful. I, I never had one specific thing that I'm embarrassed. Of. I'm just kind of embarrassed of the first few years. Yeah, just you know? just all of it. Yeah, I love it. Ron, anything? Yeah. Well, I mean, I used to like research everything that I was going to talk about. <laughs> So, because I, I, I felt like for some reason, if I talked about a joke, someone was gonna be like, "Oh, there's a part of that setup that wasn't true." <laughs> All right. So I'd like just wiki everything that I was gonna wow. talk about. So that was stupid. And <laughs> then I did like this set, like my first set. I did like three, four minutes on just about man boobs, and then uh, I, I like I researched this, and so I found out that people, some people would take women's pantyhose cut out the crotch and put their head through it and put their arms through the legs as a way to help with man boobs. So I was like, oh, that would be a fun bit. And so I would talk about it and then I'd take my shirt off and I'd be wearing that pantyhose. Oh, yeah, that's and I that's hilarious. Like, yeah, it was ahead of its time. <laughs> I love I ask you if there's anything that you're embarrassed of and you say your best bit when you first started out. <laughs> So awesome. Let's keep it moving along. Your next comedian goes by the name of Marcos Martinez. Marcos Martinez. Are you coming? Oh, shit. You know what that oh, means? No. You've been. If you missed your spot on Kill Tony, that means you get blacklisted. <laughs> Fuck yeah. That's yeah. a good one. Is that something that happens regularly, or is, what the fuck was that? Once every episode or two, somebody doesn't show up. No, 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 I mean that. Does that no. happen regularly? No, that's completely original. Uh, <laughs> normally, the Patriot, the old Patriot used to go like, pew, pew, pew. Oh, got it. But that, uh, why he You remixed in, it. Why he turned into a Latino at a donkey show, I'm not exactly <laughs> sure. I had a good date last night, I'm sorry. You had a what? Good date last night, I you, apologize. You had a date? Yeah, yeah. With, a, with a nine-year-old. <laughs> yeah. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> you really went on a date last night? Yeah, man. Uh, Tell us about that. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Did you get a Baja Fresh? No, Taco Bell. She was very disappointed. Come on, be serious. I bet she wasn't when you flew her home. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you do with this chick stuff? Uh, Time to get real, buddy. You shouldn't have brought up the date if you didn't want the tough part. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I mean, I'm was kind it, of, okay, hold I'm on. Kinda poor. Okay, right. was it a first date? Well, no shit, because yeah. you dressed up as a patriot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> Weird if you think that mask off and you were Bill Gates is all I'm saying. Oh, yeah. uh, she wasn't into the whole going Dutch thing. Uh, um, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> wow, dude. Hey, lovely, bro. But uh, at some point she started screaming at me, and I heard, <laughs> I heard this great accent, and I was like, I have to emulate that. So, oh, wow. You know. oh. Oh, get, get, get out of here! <laughs> dude, yo, you you need your own podcast, man. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to get you a spinoff, Scott Kid. whatever it takes. Thank you. So you went on a... <laughs> so that's true. You went on a date with a Latina chick, and at the end, she screamed at you. Yes, yes, because of the Taco Bell and because Sounds of normal. not going down. Oh, you really took her to Taco Bell? Come on. Hey, man, I make mistakes. I'm only uh, half human. All right, you Good. son of a bitch. I, I actually appreciate that. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> I pulled another name out of the bucket. Hopefully he's here. Put your hands together for Jared Campbell. Um. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> uh, I used to be really, really good at football. Um, like I played in the NFL for like. Three weeks, it was actually really cool. 
But they cut me, man. That was the toughest shit I ever dealt with was getting cut. Like, it was traumatizing. Because, like, when I got signed, it was real publicized all on the TV. and inter Like, I got, like, 400 Facebook notifications. Like, good job. Oh, my God. Congratulations. Don't forget about it, stranger. And when I got cut, it wasn't really publicized. So nobody knew. So I'm getting text messages, like, week 10 from girls, like, Good luck on your game today, Jared. And I'm like, in what, Madden, bitch? <laughs> and what's tough is, like, my brother, I had a brother that was, like, the star of the team, and I was, like, trying to make the team. So when I got cut, my mom didn't really understand how that worked. She's like, uh-uh, you go back in there, you tell them. Now, I said they can't have one of my boys. They need to take both of my boys or none of my boys. You got to be ambitious. Go tell them they work for free. <laughs> so then I went, uh, we good? All right, I didn't, I wasn't That's the cap, but I, I want to hear the rest of this since you're in one topic. Keep going. Uh, it's a newer joke, but I was basically, I finish it like, um, I, go, <laughs> I, I go up there and I go, well, my mama told me to tell y'all that y'all can't have just one of her sons. You want both of her boys. You got to take us. And I'm like, come on, Claire, let's go. I'm about to work for free. And I just, it's, it's, I'm, it's a newer joke. <laughs> <laughs> just being honest. Just gotcha. being honest. Gotcha. Well, I love that, uh. Yeah, and, and that's all true, right? You were at the University of Miami. You were a hurricane, if I remember correctly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. To you. And then you got picked up by the NFL. Yes, sir. Arizona Cardinals. That's got to be crazy, huh? That's well, pretty dope. And then what happens? What went wrong? What, yeah, what, for three weeks. Yeah. What? I got cut. I made it all the way to the final cuts. I thought I was going to make the team. They told me, hey, we need your playbook. I kept working out for like a year. Nothing <laughs> happened. I moved to L.A. And you always wanted to do stand-up or what? I started stand-up in college, but I really couldn't do it with football. Right, of course. And after I got cut, I wasn't doing shit, so I said... You've been doing it for a while, though, yeah? Uh, I, I did it for, like, probably like 10 times while I was in college. Oh, really? Yeah. You're, you're really confident. Yeah, you have a good night I've been out here for two years now. Doing stand-up? Yeah. Well, that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, cool, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're very engaging. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. And I love that you're talking yeah. about real stuff. Nobody... No, else. I mean, like... Yeah, no... Yeah, no, I agree. You're confident and good. You're good. I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, nobody nice, else yeah. can talk about the stuff that you're talking about. Yeah, that's about true. With yeah. that, for sure. Yeah, um, but I also kind of want to hear things outside of football, too. <laughs> 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 like, what makes you scared? <laughs> <laughs> that is a you great did, question. You did have a whole minute. You could have hit a few topics. What? <laughs> <laughs> I like that question, though. What does make you scared? Shit. <laughs> Scared of big ass dogs. <laughs> That's relatable. <laughs> what else? Ah uh, shit. Um, scared of hikes and shit like that, man. <laughs> on like cliffs and all that good stuff. Yeah. Imagine a big ass dog on a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> Scary. <laughs> Oh, anything else scare you? This is great, uh, great, great question, Ron, because Definitely. it is amazing to hear, like, especially after just knowing that he's, you know, a yeah. former NFL football player. It's like, that's a, that's great, hilarious. No matter, it, both things got laughs. You know what I mean? Both dogs and cliffs, because it's so funny to know that some guy that can probably run a 4 5 40 <laughs> is afraid of a cliff or a dog. Yeah. Like, it's like. <laughs> Yeah, no, I was real serious with my critiques. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I love it, man. Uh, so you're out here now to be a comic? Yep, full time. Oh, cool. You do, doing a lot of spots and stuff? You treating it like football? Like, do you think football <laughs> helped you with that? Work ethic wise, yeah. Like, yeah. I, I try to get on like three stages. I stay up late, wake up early. It's, it's great. Keep at it. Mm. I like your style, Jared. Yeah. Funny yeah. stuff, fun times. Jared Campbell, everybody. Yeah. He's on Twitter at Jared Quay. That's yeah, all one word, Jared Q U A Y. Jared's been on a few times. Always fun, always different. It's fun. We've had a couple people that I actually remember, like Miami Hurricanes, Jared, and Harvard, Sierra Catal. She's funny. She's going to Harvard. She's going to fucking. Yeah, she's good. She's going to sure, kill yeah. in life. Put your hands together for your next comedian. It's Jonathan Tumblin. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. You were just—you can't go on twice. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. One after another. Kidding. One black tumbling, after another. everybody. Restart the clock. I had to say it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let him shake you up. 
<laughs> no, nothing can shake me, man. Uh, I've been out here in L.A. for a while, man. I noticed that uh, people come out to L.A. They think they're going to, like, spot celebrities wherever they go and shit. And I was in a situation. I was at the Beverly Center, and these, like, three Asian girls came up to me. And they were like, oh, my God. Oh, my God, it's you. And I'm like, who the fuck are you talking about? They were like, it's you. You're, you're the guy from Transformers, right? You're, you're Tyrese. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm Tyrese. And uh, I'm standing there like, wow, oh, my God, I really want a picture with you. And I'm like, I'll take the picture if I can take at least one of y'all out to dinner. <laughs> so uh, I make arrangements. I'm on my way to get the girls. I'm trying to think, like, where would Tyrese take a girl where they got, you know, like, good food, drinks, a nice, a nice atmosphere and shit? So I take the bitch to Chipotle. <laughs> I take her to Chipotle, and halfway through the date, she's thinking, like, oh, my God, you can't be Tyrese. Why'd you lie to me like that? And I'm like, I'm sorry. You know what? My name's Jonathan. But uh, I didn't lie to you, bitch. You're just a racist because all niggas don't look like that. <laughs> That's it. There you go. Exactly a minute. It's great that your minute worked out with uh, me being that chick in the beginning. Completely <laughs> racially stereotyping you. It happens, man. Um, Who did she think you were in Transformers, though? Uh, Tyrese, Tyrese the, yeah. just the one black guy, the lonely black guy. I get mistaken for like every black guy that's doing well in life, pretty you much. Ever get, you ever get mistake? You ever get mistaken for Ron Funches? <laughs> if I gain some pounds, <laughs> gain some pounds, I what, might be. What is uh? So you, they, this really happened? Yeah, this really happened to me. God, you don't look, you don't look like Tyrese. I know, man. <laughs> That's why it's extremely racist. Asian girls, Asian nothing girls, like. I mean, they Tyrese. got the squint. You know what I'm saying? I think through the squint. Yeah. Asian girls do like they look for stars hard yeah. out here. In yeah. fact, one time a couple of them came up to me and thought I was Tyrese. <laughs> so I mean, they'll really rationalize in their head what they think they're seeing. Yeah. Jonathan, how long have you been doing stand up? A uh, year and a half, Tony. And uh, uh, I'm gonna steal a great question from my friend Ron Funches and ask you, what scares you? Uh, clowns and white women. <laughs> no, no, what scares you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm scared of clowns for real, man. That's, oh, that's weird. What do you mean? I was wondering when people say that. Like, what do you mean? Like, uh, I saw it at a very young age. Okay, but but do you mean? Is. So you mean like if somebody like the demonic clown, not not well, like yeah, fuck it, I'm scared oh, of the oh, demonic clown. Yeah. <laughs> But you're, oh, you're, you're, like you're, the run of the bill demonic clown. Yeah. Like, you're, you're gonna add demon to anything. It's scary. <laughs> <laughs> scared of IKEA. Well, demonic IKEA. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're like, if you see a guy dressed as a clown, it, you'd it, be like, yo, don't like what? What for real? Don't like, touch. Like, don't get close to me. Like, because what do you think is gonna happen? It's just an irrational. Well, he's gonna get punched. That's what's gonna. No, happen. I understand that, but <laughs> so you're irrationally afraid of clowns. Yeah, man. I don't yeah. Know. No, it's, I, it's I just. Thing. Yeah, no, I, I know it's a common fear. I just. Yeah, man. I don't know. I don't know how to explain. How it. badly I wish I could fucking, like, Uber a clown here right now <laughs> just to watch you beat the shit out of him. Like, watch his red nose fly off across the room. It'll be bad. Oh, you can't beat a clown's ass, dude. You'll fucking scar children for life. That's I mean, true. Clowns scar children. Oh, I see. So, anyway, <laughs> he's thinking about He's like a super. You and Patriot can. <laughs> Oh, no, that. he's got electricity on his hands. <laughs> uh, oh, fuck man. yeah, clowns. That's an interesting one. I had an, I had an ex, I have an ex-girlfriend who's uh, terribly afraid of clowns, but she's afraid because the she had a mean dentist when she was a kid and uh, like a little kid, and there were pictures of these happy clowns in his office. I actually oh had, really? I had the same dentist, and it sort of freaked me out too. It didn't like last forever, mm. but. Uh, <laughs> It's true. There is something about, like, in fact, human, like, when the clown is in human form, I can handle it. Like, if it was a guy dressed like a clown, it's like, all right, creep, you know, right. get away from yeah, me. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but I'm not going to beat his ass. Well, However, like, no, like, the, the but, fear of clowns, though, it kind of makes me scared. Of, I don't like women with makeup, either. It's like, what are you hiding from, yo? So I think, what the I, fuck are you I hiding from? I think we're from? getting to the root of all of right. this, right? Mm -hmm. I agree with him with the makeup. Yeah, can we talk yeah. about your mother a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> My mom's a set. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Mom's just right here, man. Mom's just close to me. Hell yeah. Well, yeah. well mm. Jonathan, we found, out, we found out a lot about you. Mm. Um, it was fun times. Always. Keep rocking. Yes, sir. So, like I was saying, like...
What? Human, human clowns don't scare me that much, but like a picture, like if I had to sleep in a bedroom yeah. and there was a picture of sure, a clown yes, okay. on the wall, I get that. I'd be up for an extra three hours, like fucking just staring at the picture. What, why is the microphone near Paige's dick? <laughs> no, for real, what is that? Is, why well, the, is that there? The original Patriot, his, his, he had a $5,000 robot suit, and uh, his microphone, for some reason, and the positioning of it all was right there at his crotch. So when we recast New Patriot in an outfit completely bought off Amazon Prime for like $15, <laughs> we decided that the, one of the only traditions we would also keep is uh, keeping the speaker box at the crotch. So. Fire! <laughs> I knew I was going to be upset that I asked that. <laughs> I love it. You're doing a great job, Patriot. I'm actually very surprised. Put your hands together for Scott Kidd, everybody. He's telling me right over there. So much fun. <laughs> Oh, I just got to work with this kid this weekend. He's a favorite here on Kill Tony, a one-liner specialist. Put your hands together for Gabriel Killian, everybody. I want some more TV. I'm looking out most every day. I want to open up a tattoo parlor that specializes in breast tattoos. Going to call it Tit for Tat. I grew up pretty broke, man. Every year I had to pitch in on my own birthday present. <laughs> Times got so tough, I once stole an old lady's purse. I was disappointed because she barely had a few dollars in it. But the spinning roundhouse kick I knocked her out with, totally fucking worth it. <laughs> <laughs> I've had my ups and downs in life, man. <laughs> Mostly downs. It's been rough, but uh, I can hold my head high knowing that even during the worst of times, during my lowest points, I never, not once, ever forgot about Dre. <laughs> Fuck yeah. There it is. You're real killing Respect. Respect, I love that. It's almost you can't tell he's Armenian until after the set when he just goes to the mic and goes, Respect. <laughs> <laughs> so funny, always, Gabe. You must have a crazy writing process because you've done a lot of different minutes on this show at least five or six times, right? More than that, yeah. <laughs> and, and usually most of the jokes kill when it doesn't end with spinning roundhouse kick. Uh, that was what we call a misdirect. I love your style, though, Gabe. Thank Gabe you. pulled an interesting maneuver this weekend. Uh, I was in San Francisco with Jeffrey Ross. You guys know what it's like being on the road. You arrive, you drop off the stuff at the hotel, whatever. Maybe you grab something to eat. You go to the show, right? We arrive at Cobb's Comedy Club, and... The host is sitting there, the host opener, you know what I mean? He's sitting in the green room, and then there's Gabe Killian sitting on the couch. <laughs> and uh, I'm like, Gabe, what the fuck's up? He goes, what, what's up? You know, respect, what's up? You know, he's like, oh. <laughs> and he, and, he, and uh, Jeff's like, what's up, Gabe? How you doing, man? And Gabe immediately just goes, hey, what's up, man? Can I do a guest spot? Just like that. <laughs> to who? He, to Jeff? Yeah. But, but he, luckily, uh, Jeff knew Gabe from uh, doing, a, doing a spot before the roast battle on a Tuesday oh. night, another popular show here. And Gabe had, like, this crazy, like, Carson moment on doing stand-up before the roast battle a few weeks ago where everybody in the room's like, who the fuck's that guy? Because he's just firing off joke after joke like that. And he got to do uh, one of the more probably fun nights in your career, right? Got to do a couple spots. Yeah, the sold-out cops. Cops, yeah, that's a big yeah. room. That's ballsy, man. Yeah, I, yeah. I wouldn't even have asked. Yeah. To do to say. I, I was there. Uh, I had a spot there the night before, so I and I was there the next day, so I figured, why not ask? But that's what's that's what, sort of what's funny about it to me is like Gabe is sort of a nervous. Like I mean, you could tell in your cadence, and if you the more you know him, the more you know he's like a very, very nice, polite, and sort of nervous, humble kind of guy. That's why it was so funny when he just blurred Jeff Ross. is like, hey, what's up, man? Good to see you. And he's just like, hi, hi, hi. Can I do a guest spot? I just wanted, <laughs> I, I just wanted to get it before someone else asked him. No, of course. Well, there was nobody else ever asks when you're on the road. Nobody else has the balls to do that. So I love that uh, you did that maneuver. Balls I worked out once for you. I, I'd like to hear in the future if you try yeah, that I, I, Well, you, but you knew, Jeff, you knew Jeff. He's seen you, right? Yeah. 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 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey, good on you, man. That was great. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And he did two uh, five-minute guest sets and uh, killed in front of sold-out crowds. And he just had another fun set here. Thank you, Gabriel. Oh, thank you. A killer, Gabe Killian. He's on Twitter at Gabriel Killian. All one word. Oh, yeah. Jonathan Tumblin is J. Sherlock T. And Jared K. Oh, there you go. Fuck yeah. All right. J. Sherlock T. And Jared Kwai was Jared Campbell. Jared Q-U-A-Y. Okay, sure. Who cares about the enunciation? You don't Twitter. enunciate shit on Twitter, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Gabe is at Gabriel Killian. And uh, we're rolling along. Here we go. We're getting a lot of people up. This is fun. Your next comedian goes by the name of Jordan Perry. Oh, shit. You know uh, what that means. Uh, Jordan Perry. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Don't let him go, Craig. I All fucking right. hate that shit. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. How do you rationalize that one? I know an Asian chick didn't let you go on a date with her. Oh. You can't do. You can't do your own awe. I can't. No, that's no. not how awes work. They do it in the south. I got stood up. Aww. <laughs> Done deal. You Done especially deal. can't do your. Own. You especially can't do your own awe if there's an actual audience here. <laughs> it's up to the audience. <laughs> All right. Let, let's hope this next Too person's late. here. Put your hands together for Cal Verducci. Oh, shit. You know what that means? Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh my god. I fucking hate that. I'm so sorry, <laughs> podcast listeners, that you have to go through this. People kill for these spots. It's so funny. I had a few comedians come up to me earlier and they're like, hey, can you get me on Kill Tony? And I'm like, it's a bucket. Like, no. it's an actual. This guy's writing down fake names so he can do that fucking shit. <laughs> You son of a bitch. Verducci is the name. I would write fake, you know? That does sound fake. Yeah. Cal Verducci. Like, that's the yeah. whitest first name with the most Italian last name. <laughs> Let's try it again. Michael Gowdy. Here he comes. Yeah. Another Dodger. Okay, um, I'm going to keep it real. <laughs> I've been doing LA open mics for almost four years, and it's mostly just five guys just jerking off the internet porn while staring at phones. So, 40 people plus fucking Chris D'Elia, I am <laughs> nervous on my fucking mind. So, but we'll get through this. Uh, I will get through this, I hope. So, uh, <laughs> I, I was born in Florida. I was raised uh, mostly in Georgia for the first 13 years of my life. Um, you know, uh, we had a lot of woods in our backyard. Um, when I would go out, my mom would say, wear bright, wear bright clothes because the hunters might, uh, the drunk hunters might mistake you for game. I've been moderately to severely drunk up here, and I can tell you guys, you know, you've never looked like a room full of deer to me, so. Um, you know, I've, uh, my dad called me the other day and said, your, uh, your cousin, um, your cousin's having pancreas uh, surgery because you know, alcoholism, of course, runs in our family. And uh, can you believe he drank that much? And I'm like, uh, yes, because I've seen his wife. Oh. <laughs> I, <laughs> I would be in a state of near unconsciousness every fucking day of my life. Oh, man. Oh, man. I love it. Michael Gowdy. Mm. Thank you uh, for dressing up in your cum shorts. <laughs> <laughs> I never watched my family. Oh, my God. God. You come short. <laughs> I've never even. It's from I've LA Open Micro jerking off to I've the. I've never even board. heard the terminology come shorts before, yeah. but that's exactly what those are. <laughs> <laughs> for that's you food listeners, stains, God damn it, it's food stains. For it's you listeners, cum. they they are. Uh, it's it's a bathing suit. That it's rides a bathing up, suit. Yes. Uh, <laughs> right, rides above his knees. And has what appears to be light even if, white stains on them. Even if it's not cum, when right. you put those on, you got to be like, oh, I can't wear these because it looks like there's cum <laughs> on them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This guy was just like, fuck it, and put them on. Yeah. Nobody's going to believe you when you go, no, no, it's not actual cum. Like, All right, well, then uh, lay off the Cinnabon, you know what I mean? Whatever icing is going on there. <laughs> 
Stop feeding your penis food. <laughs> <laughs> Especially powdered donuts. Or I was going to thank you. I was going to thank you for putting out these podcasts, but fuck that shit. Oh, I love your style, Michael. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. What I really love is that uh, you didn't really start until 30 seconds in. You were talking about how uh, how nervous you were and what other open mics were like. Because this guy's a fucking started. legend, am I right? <laughs> no, you're not right. You are not right. You are not right. This guy is awesome. But I appreciate the compliment, but you are not right, number one. And number two, uh, it, was, it, it made me be on his side when he said that. Oh, yeah, so. <laughs> totally. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Michael, how long have you been doing stand-up? Almost four years, Tony. Uh, two months, I'll be, it'll be four years. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, and how much do you get up? How long? How often do you get up? Uh, about three three times a week on average. All right, well, that's okay. that's, that's so cool. Do you, you wear swimming trunks every time? <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah, they just have two pairs of shorts, believe it or not, yeah. So okay. You have two pairs of shorts? Yes, I have No pants? Uh, so no you don't pants. wear pants? Um, well, very rarely. So. But, well, if it's real cold, you wear pants. Yes. I'd hate to see the pair of shorts you don't wear to the comedy store. <laughs> 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 those actually have shit and blood on them, too. <laughs> oh, I'm going to the comedy store. I'm going to wear my good shorts. <laughs> Mm, shitty or cummy? Hmm. Let's go with cummy. Uh, you can't smell. I'm going to be in front of Chris D'Elia tonight. Let's go with cummy. <laughs> oh, my God. I love it. <laughs> One of the one of the Kill Tony trademarks is that we always tell people to not wear shorts on stage. But <laughs> I think we're gonna stick with you. Keep those, sh keep rocking those shorts, Michael. It won't be washed in a week. Yeah. I love it. You could be the come short comedian. <laughs> uh, Your last yeah. bit I don't remember anymore, but it was good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the uncle that drinks because yeah, of it was real personal. Life. Yeah, you were like, oh, you know, he hates that lady. Yeah, it was pretty harsh. Yeah, I liked which it. Kind of made it funny. Yeah. Yeah. Are you from LA? No, I um, I lived in Georgia for 13 years. Oh, and moved right. to Detroit, Michigan. So yeah, oh, two Midwesterners over here. Yeah, yeah. You guys know. Screw blue. I mean, normally, you know, and I mean, I'm just I'm just floating this out there. Is that what I the direction I thought you were going in, which I thought would have been funnier than comparing it to the room, and you could take this or leave it or whatever. But I thought you were saying that when your mom told you that people might confuse you for game, that you were going to talk about how, like, that's not a confidence builder to hear when you're a kid, that your mom thinks that you, you know, in yeah, your own words and whatever, you, you know. Yeah. I think that's an interesting route to take. Like, it's hard to not turn out to be the cum shorts guy when your mom <laughs> thought that you were a... Your mom, your mom thought you could be confused for a uh, an elk or something like that. There, there was a lot of disrespect when I was a kid. Definitely, <laughs> yeah. I oh. could definitely go that route. So, yeah. hell yeah. <laughs> what else do you do for fun? Um, Besides common? Um, <laughs> yeah, I was gonna think you guys were gonna say masturbate or something. Really um, yeah, what do you do for fun? I do collect autographs around L.A. You know, and I try to sell things on eBay, that kind of shit. So, so you find, so you find. Joy in that, or what? <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm, I'm being serious. Yeah. I like, do. like, do you, you, you like collecting? Is that what? Yeah, I, I collect autographs. I collect uh, baseball and sports cards. You know. Well, uh -huh. That makes sense because your shorts look like they were signed by the Stay Puft Marshmallow. <laughs> <laughs> what's your What's your most famous autograph, or what's What's your uh... the, the one I'm most proud of is I bought recently, like uh, two weeks ago. It's Wayne Gretzky signed jersey. Oh wow! Oh, cool. Well, that's a good one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there still money in baseball yeah, cards though nowadays? Is it well, is that in, still in a that thing world. or? Yeah, I, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I think the autograph market is booming more than ever. I think. So. Oh really? Yeah. You look surprised, yeah, because everyone wants a selfie, but the autographs are selling for major bucks now. So, yeah. Wow. Because I. Would you just say because everyone wants a selfie? Is that what you said? Yeah, because yeah. when you meet a celebrity like you, you know, you just, ooh, let me take a yeah. selfie. You know what I'm saying. They don't care about the autograph. Yeah, it's interesting. That whole game changed. Yeah. Huh. Well, fuck yeah, Michael. I love your style. Good Thank job. You so much, That's so. Michael Thank Gowdy, you. everybody. Michael P. Gowdy, G O W D Y. Uh, Michael was fun, right? He was fun. How you doing, Ron? You having fun? I'm having a good time. I love your style. I could, I could listen to your voice all fucking day. Yeah, it's true. Oh, thank 
Yeah. I wish everybody that I talked to had like a, a headset or whatever, so then mm -hmm. it came out in your voice, whatever they said. Oh, that's pretty Life would creepy. be so much, I, <laughs> I would just have a smile all the time. <laughs> I don't like that at all. <laughs> <laughs> Even that was cute. Totally. Adorable. You know what's interesting actually to see is like different comedians like this that, uh, how you feel about them immediately when they step on stage mm -hmm. before they even mm -hmm. say anything, right? Yeah. It's I don't do that with, like, I don't do that when I'm at a show watching right. guys. I just, yeah. you know, because I know they're professionals maybe. But it's interesting, like the feeling you get from certain mm -hmm. people. It's when you're like, "Oh, I feel confident in you," or you're yeah, like, exactly. Oh, I'm really scared for you right now. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, for real though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's for real. It's or like, oh, I gotta wash my shorts sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bet Michael never wears those again. Good. He's like, <laughs> he's in the back. I already took them off. <laughs> it's just in his tidy whiteies right now. <laughs> Oh, we love this young lady. Put your hands together for Clee Wiggins, everybody. Clee! Oh, we don't love her anymore. No, 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 you know no, 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 no. oh, her. Oh, oh, thank God. Thank He's God. He's so upset. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, you so oh, <laughs> even behind the mask. <laughs> I was reading my Star Wars book in the corner as usual. Not paying attention to the show. Um... Yeah. Uh, let's see. So I um, I moved in with my boyfriend about a year ago, and uh, in that year we've had the cops called on us like four times by our neighbors uh, because we get in a lot of okay. So I don't know if you can tell by looking, but I'm a nerd. My boyfriend's a nerd. He's a black nerd. And we get in fights about the nerdiest things, but we still argue like two black people. So it's a lot of motherfuckers and niggas. But what we're arguing about is like how to best reboot Buck Rogers or why Batman can't be out in the daytime and that's why the Dark Knight sucks. <laughs> but our white neighbors are not appreciative of it. this and the cops come and, and they say to me like, ma'am, are you okay? And I go, you know what this motherfucker had the nerve to tell me? He said if you reboot Buck Rogers, Twinkie would be an unnecessary character. Who the fuck is gonna carry Dr. Theopolis if you don't have Twinkie? That is some bullshit. If I say like that, the, the third time the cops are no longer coming back because they don't care about our bullshit arguments. <laughs> Boom. Three Wiggins. Three. Black nerd. You, you did that same uh, bit last time you were on stage, right? Uh, did I? I don't know. I had a stroke last year. I can't remember I shit. I think so because I remember, because I, I, I don't know what Buck Rogers is. And I remember still, that being really? my note. Yeah, no, I still, since the last time you were on, I haven't gone back and uh, watched or listened to or read whatever Buck Rogers is. It I'm was, not even sure what it is. It's a comic book and a TV show from and the 80s. Twinkie was like the twink of Buck Rogers. He was like, here's a gay robot and she's uh, pretty much. Is that true? Did I, I thought is that was, where that uh, term comes from? I think so. Super you know, I real? I did it on the yeah. first time I came. I mean, that's... Twink that's to me was always yeah. a gay robot. So. Well, huh. Twinkie was his name, uh, not Twinkie. But, uh... <laughs> yeah, I, did I do that the last time? I thought I did a different one, but maybe I did that one. I don't remember. I honestly it's don't. It's and pretty I don't funny. <laughs> it's pretty funny. I think, like last what we said last time, it is funny, you know, having the police come over about, you know, getting in yeah. a fight, and then the fight mm -hmm. is yeah. just comic book nerd stuff. Yeah. Uh, and they don't care. Right? Maybe the... The references you are using for some of the people who have no idea, like Tony, who Buck Rogers is, and you could also maybe just update it a little to, like, I don't know, Doctor. Star Wars. Is or, that yeah. true that uh, Batman doesn't go out during the day? Well, according to Ed, uh, Batman should not be seen in the daytime. Therefore, that's why the, the Christopher Nolan movies suck. Because yeah, that's, he goes, that's common go sense. It is interesting. Yeah. Well, yeah. He really doesn't. Ed, Ed, Ed and Ron. Yeah, I mean, I think makes sense. Sense. Wait, why yeah. does that suck? I don't get it. Because uh, he's, he's the Dark Knight, so yeah, him fighting Bane at 2 p.m. in the afternoon is somehow... It just doesn't feel right. It's, no. it's wrong. It's all wrong. Do you agree with that? Yeah, because he's supposed to be in the shadows. Just yeah, but there's him. shadows in the daytime. There's more shadows. <laughs> <laughs> well, touche. <laughs> Great fucking point. But I agree. I, like, I, I mean, I like the Christopher Nolan... I don't like the, the first one, but I like huh. the second two, and he hates all of them. This turned into, like, that was actually our first argument was about Batman. Oh, and, like, oh, 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 this turned into, like, a fist fight, almost. What, what, what if so. Batman fucking, what if there's crime going on in the daytime? Batman's like, oh, I can't go out. 
Spider-Man's job. <laughs> right, right. Uh, well, no. I assume more Superman because, you know. Gotcha. I agree with them. I think, I mean, you Spider-Man should shorten it up a little bit and um, maybe not because you're explaining the description mm-hmm. first and then giving an example. Mm-hmm. But maybe I would just give an example and then I would also yeah. have it be a little bit more. Yeah, because I mean, I'm a nerd and the Buck Rogers thing doesn't work for me either. Really? Because I, no. I, I don't really know who Buck Rogers is, but I, I knew what she was getting at. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I don't think, I don't know if the reference really matters I mean that, that's sort of my point about like continuing I guess because I think now that I recall I don't listen to the show and I'm sorry Tony <laughs> All about yeah I, uh, I did I do recall now like the, I think I did it when Bobby Lee was here and uh, I think I kept the reference because I was like I, it's not about the reference it's about like it's a stupid nerdy argument so yeah exactly yeah and like you know even like then it's part of the point is like the cops don't even know what the fuck we're talking about Right. But it's just like, motherfucker, how the fuck are you going to tell me Twinkies are necessary? Right. Yeah. At least happened the other day when we got in an argument. Like, I mean, it happens all the time. Yes. Just why we have a whatever. Yeah, yeah maybe yeah. take it to the next level and just get crazy geeky about it. So even you're, you're kind of proving the point that it's what you're talking I about. Think the, lo- so the longer version of that bit goes into the many, many arguments. Like, I mean, and the whole, like, his whole, like, he gets mad at me. Like, he got mad at me about... Uh, we went to see Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm a person, I go. I tend to go pee like right at the beginning of a movie. Then, then we got in a huge fight about that. It turned into a stupid... Well, these, do, these do sound like real issues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't diminish our love, but yeah. <laughs> you, you really are a nerd too, right? Like you own that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm a sci-fi what nerd. What I love it, is that you are always reading a Star Wars book. <laughs> That's always yeah. like your opening line. And I know that it's, it's true because I've seen you with different Star Wars <laughs> books. And I think there's something really funny in that, like how a, lot, some, of, a lot of nerds get stereotyped if, you're, if you watch Star Wars a lot. But if you read Star Wars a lot, <laughs> that's like the fucking trifecta of nerddom. Yeah, like, uh, uh, yeah. Somebody was just asking me downstairs, like, what, they, what I thought okay. about a certain, like, Star Wars book. And I was like, oh, that one actually is not that good. But if you go to the second two, if you can power through... Book 11 of the Legacy of the Force, then books 12 and 13 are awesome. This is the part where I kick you out for being such a nerd. <laughs> the, the natural bully in me has to let you go after dropping <laughs> book 11. <laughs> Lee, I love you so much. Great I love stuff. you too, Tony. Clee Wiggins. Okay. At Clee the yeah, Pimp. We did it again with Clee. This is the part of the show where we bring on our two regulars. These two girls do a new minute each week. Oh. Uh, since the show started. So it's always fun to see what they're going to do different and new, and it's always a blast. So let's get it going. Uh, your first one tonight is a college dropout. She was going to the University of Florida. She only had a few semesters left, but then she came on Kill Tony for the first time, and she decided to stay in L.A. And her stand-up, comedi- her stand-up career started here a little over a year ago. She's here for you right now with another new minute. It's Kimberly Kong. <laughs> What's up, guys? How are you? <clears throat> I am in a long-distance relationship. I don't know if anybody has ever been in one of those, but they're super difficult. They're really hard. Um, it's really hard because um, I live in California, and my boyfriend lives all the way in my imagination. <laughs> so it's like not a real thing. Um, I can't, I don't think I can be in a relationship because I'm a comedian. It's really hard. So I got online the other day and I almost bought a vibrator on Groupon. (laughs) But, um, my mom always says that you get what you pay for. So I didn't want to get half off or half off. (laughs) Um, it was really sad though because I got on eBay and I started bidding on a vibrator. I was like, let's give this a try. Um, and there's no more pathetic feeling than lose, being outbid by a fake penis. Like, I just can't even buy a used fake one online. The, the universe won't give me that. It's weird when girls fight over men, too, you know? Because there's so many dicks in the... She's <laughs> been here before. Yeah. I love that. I love that half off, half off, and the. Uh, <laughs> you shouldn't use Groupon though. You know, maybe. Sh- it's true. There was vibrators half off on Groupon last wow. week. I missed it. <laughs> I don't want to. That's talk probably about better. It. It's probably better. 
Yeah. It's perfect. It's part of the setup anyway, the Groupon part and the half off. And and then the outbid for the dildo, that just sounds so real and funny and, and depressing. Yeah. It's so sad. That yeah. is true. I was the one selling the dildo, so I know that's true. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Fuck yeah. And then what, what were you talking about there at the end? You were, you were going to finish that. There's so oh, many girls. Well, I just started this whole new bit about I don't understand why women fight over men because there's just like so many dicks. Like I could fit a dick into every crevice and there's still like 40 dicks in the comedy store tonight. You know, like there's so many dicks in the world. No one should ever fight over one because hmm. chances are it's not going to be that great. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, fine. You should run for the president of women. <laughs> I love that. I like that platform. <laughs> There's enough dicks for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and more. There's a dick, there's a dick, there's a dick. I'd like your vote at the polls, November 14th. Well, when I was working on that, I was like looking up how many men there are. I wanted percentages of dicks. So I was getting really into that one. It was too much for tonight. Did you end up at a uh, pie chart of dick at one point? <laughs> well, I, was spl I was splitting them up into nationalities. Wow. Fuck yeah. You really there's enough for everybody. And there more. <laughs> I think Indian there's actually dicks, more Asian women. Dicks, white dicks, black dicks. We all come together. <laughs> <laughs> a I world mean. fair. I can really rally behind this. <laughs> I think there are more women than guys in the population. Isn't that the... Yeah, I think so, yeah. At the University of Florida, there is. Whoa. Oh, okay. There's like six girls to every guy. Wow. And that's where the dick fights. That's out. where that's... Yeah, yeah that's exactly. <laughs> Yeah. There are not enough dicks. Never mind. <laughs> uh, so great. Uh, again, for some weird reason, I'm going to steal my favorite question that I've ever heard asked on uh, on this show. And since I've never asked you this, I'm going to do it. What scares you, Kim? Uh, what scares I'm going to call it from now on, by the way, every episode. I'm going to use this, Ron, and I'm going to call it the Funches question. Cool. <laughs> uh, I'm really scared of the dark. Uh -huh. Like being one. by myself in the dark. <laughs> also the comedy store a little bit. <laughs> yeah, so, those two. Yeah, you keep coming back. I keep coming. I don't know what it is. That's what the scary part is. I can't stop. Mm -hmm. So creepy. Okay, well. That, that's, <laughs> how that's how it is. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fun stuff. I like your Thank style, you. Kim. Anything else for Kim, guys? That's funny. Thank you're, you. You're good at comedy. You're Keep it job. up. Thank you. Kimberly Congdon is Thanks. at Kimberly Congdon on Twitter. She did Roast Battle here, a live show that takes place here on Tuesdays and annihilated a couple weeks ago. That was fun to watch. Um, your final comedian of the night and the other regular here on Kill Tony uh, is a regular here, obviously, and also on the Dysentery podcast. Uh, very, 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 very funny young lady. Put your hands together for Sarah Weinshank, everybody. Me, no flexing, didn't even... What's up? I'm scared of dying. That's why I think I fixate on the little things. It's how I cope. Because you never know, you know? Like these... I will think about dying if I'm not obsessing about something small. For example, the goat cheese medallions in my fridge. Is that the closest I will ever get to receiving a blue ribbon? Maybe. When I was eating an artichoke, I wondered, is this the closest I will ever be to becoming a cardiologist? <laughs> It's a thinker. Uh, why has everyone just ignored the fact that 50 Cent wrote a song about his dick that, in which he called it his magic stick? Remember that? It needs to be addressed. All right. My favorite punchline of the night. Remember that? Remember that is good. <laughs> Album title. I love it. Uh, those are those are funny. Uh, the medallion one. I'm, 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 am I right? The goat cheese has this, comes in that like white yeah. tin foil yeah. with the it's blue. It's like a little right. circle. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. That is a goat cheese medallion. Yeah. <laughs> what do you use those for? What do you What do you do with that? Uh, it just depends on the mood. 
snack. <laughs> yeah, like sometimes I'll put it on a cracker, a gluten-free cracker. Sometimes I'll put it, you know, upon pasta, a top pasta, not Ooh. a pond. Um, there, we can, I, I can tell a you, pond I was think, way more fun. I yeah, like that. Like what? Put it upon pond. I know. I, was, I should have just stayed in the pocket Fuck with you a guys. pond. Yeah. yeah. Say what you want. Had it, have it with some strawberries. Oh, that's good. Oh, Tony. <laughs> that's good. Cheese and strawberries? Well, yeah. yeah. Together like that? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Not in the same bite. You do yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah, really? yeah, no, mm-hmm. it's an amazing clash. It, it really it is? is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I, would, <laughs> I would never think of that. Yeah, the two things dance in your mouth. Wow. No, they really do. In fact, it reminds me of the amazing cooking of Elise Lane. Uh, what? Available. The girl with the pan on Facebook and Instagram. Yes. Uh, did you get to try any of Elise's food today, Sarah? No, I think I missed this. But shout out to Elise. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping it like, real. You have a good, you have like a solid voice. Yeah. That's what I like about well, it, you. It was also good that you talk about, like, right from jump, like, we got a sense of what you, who you are and what you're about, just mm-hmm. that you're scared to death. Like, that's kind of an interesting way to open up a set, you know? So I felt like I was, because I feel that way too, you know. I think about it all yeah. the time. And, but that's obvious, the way you say it, and when you, and when you say that, we feel that you feel that way. You know what I mean? Like it's not, it doesn't sound like you're doing an act, which is cool, which is I think what you're saying, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's the, when you have like, I mean, that's what a lot of people struggle for a long time to get is their own personal rhythm, and you seem to already be well on your way to doing that. And so it was very interesting. Thank, Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I love that you you're, you opened up with the Funches question, which yeah. is what scares you. <laughs> yeah, because I was think I've been. It's like the end of Eight Mile. She really. fucking beat you to yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah! No. Like, you just beat everything. Beat the game. Uh, God, what was my next question gonna be? It was. Uh, oh, is there a specific way of uh, of dying that you're more afraid of than others? Is there something that you always think you have or that you're extra paranoid about? No, I just like I just want to. I just, just the mystery of it, Mm -hmm. or like how, how's it going to be, what's going to happen, but then it's like, there's no point in worrying about it. Right. But also like, that also, because like, it's going to happen, it also propels me forward, it's like, fuck it, I got to go do my minute, I got to, you know, like, fuck it, this could be my last minute, you never know. So it's like, it like propels me forward, but it also like psychs me out sometimes <laughs> you know i'm yeah. serious Di- dying is going to be amazing we don't have anyone that has ever been able to tell us it's just right. going to be the greatest thing ever yeah bunch of pussy everywhere <sighs> ghost pussies talk talk about talk about cum shorts <laughs> <laughs> that's all it is is cum shorts up there uh fuck yeah sarah well fun stuff um yeah thank you you're welcome. Sarah Weinshank. She's on Twitter at Princess Shank. Kimberly Congdon's on Twitter at Kimberly Congdon. Kimberly Congdon and Sarah Weinsch and Princess Shank on Twitter. Uh, we did it. That's Kill Tony 64, guys. Hey, thanks for having me. Yay. Promote something. You guys are on Twitter. I got my tour coming up. Yeah. Uh, you can go to my website, crystalia.com. My tour, I'm doing all 31 cities, so go check that out. Yes. Ooh, I'm just at, at Ron Funches. Just chilling mostly. Yeah, but we and we got our show coming up. Undateable season two. Season two. That's right, That's Kill right. Tony fans. Get on board. Watch Undateable. Rewatch it. TiVo it. Play it on repeat over and over again. I don't know if that helps numbers or yeah, not. Fuck do it anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just do it. You I guys are crazy comedy earlier. fans, so uh, blow up, blow these guys up. <laughs> Scott Kidd <laughs> is on Twitter at Devo Kid. That's right. Pop, pop. All right. That's D E V O K I D D. That's Devo Kit. Uh, and uh, of course, Elise Lane, the newest chef and newest sponsor of Kill Tony, Private Chef. Follow her on Twitter at Elise Lane, E L Y S E L A I N. Follow her on Instagram, The Girl with the Pan. And follow her on Facebook, The Girl with the Pan. She's The Girl with the Pan. Delicious food, Elise Lane. Thank you so much, everybody. That's episode 64 of Kill Tony. Thank you.